Hey everybody, this is Dr. William Clark here. This is uh, the Dr. William Clark podcast. Got glad to be with you again for another podcast. And um, you know, this is an interesting time to be podcasting uh, in our industry, in our country, uh, because of the rampant concern and the growth of this virus we call COVID nineteen. Um, this is an interesting time to be to be in service of the community. Uh, especially with so many people who are uh, being actively impacted by this particular virus. Um, You know, there's so much to say uh, about it, and I wanted to talk about how to lead your nonprofit through a crisis, particularly since we have a current crisis going on. And uh, I heard a quote recently that uh, I think just defines the moment. And the quote says, you'll find out who your true leaders are by how they handle A crisis, and certainly it seems as though this moment rises to that. Now, we typically, or at least as of late, have been covering um, uh, fundraising and grant writing and everything related to revenue uh, on this podcast for nonprofits. And I think, you know, even with this crisis, this uh, the topic of money still has a relevant understanding, a relevant uh, place in our conversation on this podcast, uh, because we don't know how all of this is going to impact the business side of running a nonprofit. And for those of you starting a nonprofit, for those of you who are new to the business, those of you who just uh, launched and or who have decided recently this is what you want to do, you want to build a passion project called a nonprofit or a ministry. The while. Uh, it is certainly welcome to have uh, your heart and your passion introduced and integrated into the industry itself. Uh, there is a business side to running a nonprofit, and that is not talked about often. That is not uh, the lead of a conversation when you talk about a nonprofit. But there, there is a business side to a nonprofit. There are uh, we have to account for revenue and expenses. And the bottom line, as it relates to uh, the nonprofits that we lead and that we care so deeply about, whether it's a church, ministry, faith-based institution, nonprofit, foundation, fill in the blank, whatever, um, there's the business side to it. And when a crisis hits of any type, uh, what people need more than ever is leadership. And uh, as your host of this podcast, as a student of leadership, as a student of nonprofits, I'm certainly glad uh, to lend a voice, perhaps some sort of thoughts and guidance to some of you who may be wondering, how do I lead my nonprofit through a crisis? And for those of you who um, have yet to be, who have yet to respond to the crisis, uh, I, I do not intend to use this particular podcast as a how-to or what you should do or what you ought to be doing for your business. Every company is different. Every culture is different. I want to provide a a high-level perspective of how to lead your nonprofit through a crisis. And I believe these principles I'm going to share has uh, a universal application to any crisis, whether it is something that we're dealing with like what we're dealing with right now, a weather event, an act of God, uh, God forbid, a terror attack or anything like that. Uh, People turn to you for leadership. And so I want to have this conversation with you on this podcast and uh, bear with me. Um, And as you listen to this podcast, I want you to leave a comment. I want you to share. I want you to like. I want you to be responsive. Do something. Say something. Right. As we have this conversation, because uh, we need to share good information amongst our community. And I want to make sure that I'm doing my part here. So there is only one piece of advice uh, in terms of how to lead your nonprofit through a crisis. And that piece of advice is a crisis is all about leadership. At the end of the day, it is all about leadership. It's all about who is leading the ship and guiding the ship from the current place that we are in to the desired location everyone wants to get to. We all want to get to a place where we're no longer worried about this virus. We're no longer worried about our loved ones, our businesses, our children, our schools, our government. We want to get to a place where we can get back to, quote, normal, right? And unfortunately, events like this kind of creates a new normal that may not look like the previous normal that we were dealing with prior to this outbreak, prior to this pandemic, 
And so leadership has to be the answer to how to lead through a crisis. Now, historically on this podcast, we have talked about leadership. And so I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about some of the things we've talked about in the past, but particularly, how do you define leadership? And the most basic definition, the most basic way to define leadership is your internal ability to influence groups of people to achieve a singular set of goals. All right. It's your internal ability to influence a group of people to achieve a singular set of goals. And as the leader of your nonprofit, as the leader of your ministry, as a leader of your business, people are looking to you for influence, guidance, direction. They look they're looking to you to point them to where they should go. A lot of people have a lot of things to worry about at home. And one of the least areas of concern that they want to turn their attention to is leadership at the workplace. Now, people are going to have a selfish interest to some degree, right? They're, I mean, if you go to the stores, the, the shelves are barren. They are absolutely barren. You can you can go store to store and you will see absolutely nothing on the shelves. You go online and shopping, everything is sold out. And people had to buy those things with some sort of revenue, right? And the selfish side of this whole outbreak is, am I going to still have a job? Am I going to still have money to pay bills, pay my mortgage, pay my rent, pay my car note, pay my electric bill, pay this and pay that? And so I need to hear from my leaders, like, what what's happening? Is this going to impact my paycheck? And while I may not make much in this industry because I'm a nonprofit professional, um, can I still count on that check? The the stock market is going crazy. It shut down twice this week as of this recording. And uh, people are worried about their their pensions, their 401ks, their investments. People are paying for their kids to go to college. Grandparents are chipping in and helping their kids and grandkids. You have aunts and uncles taking care of nieces and nephews due to family circumstances. You have families dealing with incarcerated family members. And so the burden has been shifted on them. And then comes this virus. Then comes this outbreak. And the question there that they're turning to is how we're going to survive. We've got to buy all the toilet paper, all the paper towel, all the water that we can buy, all the alcohol we can buy, all the disinfectant and cleaning materials we can buy. And after we buy all that, we got to take care of the kids because depending on where you're living at right now, and I'm likely, you know, by the time this recording hits, or surely thereafter, most schools, college, grade schools, high schools, etc., will be shut down. And so parents who have uh, reasonably uh, ex- expect reasonable expectations to drop off their kids prior to this week are now at a point saying, I can't because the districts are closed. So what's going to happen with my job? Because we don't have a work from home policy in our industry, in our nonprofit industry, which is Likely the case across the board. What's going to happen? Am I going to have to burn my PTO that I was saving for another time so that I can watch my children for one, two, three, four weeks? My grown over 18 kids who are in college are home. Colleges are shut down. And so, my goodness, they eat me out of house and home every summer and every spring break and every Christmas break. But wait a minute. They're not on spring break anymore. They're on, like, a a, a long-term spring break that has no end date. So, my grown kids, love them, eat me out of house and home. What am I going to do? I got to buy double, triple the bread. I got to triple uh, triple up on my... um, my laundry detergent, triple up on on extra tuna salad, tri- triple on all my basic groceries, utility bill, which was dipping. Now it's about to go up again because my kids are home. Love them. But I got to pay for it and pay for their tuition so they can go to school online, <laughs> online. It's real. And people are looking to you in this industry, in the nonprofit industry, in your ministry for leadership. Leadership is all about influence. At the end of the day, as you're wrestling with this, as you try to figure out what to do for your church, your business, your nonprofit, you got to take a couple of steps under the leadership banner to come to a conclusion that will bless your people. Hear me good. Now, you know, I'm a pastor and and I'm going to use some of this pastoral language because I think it, it fits 
this is the moment where leadership has to express itself through the form of grace, through the form of mercy, through the form of higher knowledge and influence and intellect. Because quite frankly, and I heard it uh, recently as I was listening to a podcast of, of someone else, we are living, we are going through something, right, that we have not lived through before. Now, we can read about other experiences, and that's cool, but it's different when it's your turn to get into time, it, when it's your turn to get into the game. When the coach, Almighty God, throws you into the game and says it's your time to lead, it's different when you're in the game versus when you're on the bench criticizing those who've been starting in the starting five for the past 20, 30 years in this business. Now it's our turn. So here are a couple of things I want to share with you. You got to have some solid leadership, man. Leadership is about influence. Now, when it comes to leadership, you have to tap into team intelligence. As you think through augmenting your policies uh, around uh, human resources and et cetera, PTO, uh, time off, work from home, et cetera, pay, you got to look at uh, all these things, right? You need to tap into team intelligence because it is the team around you that's going to help you navigate through this problem. If you think that you can do it on your own, you are sadly mistaken. Uh, here's another thing I heard on, on another podcast. This is the time. This crisis is the time to rethink how you've been doing business. If you never had time, if you had every excuse in the world to not change and adjust, my friend, this is the perfect time to make changes. Are there ways you can change the culture of your organization so that you can shift your business to be more sustainable, more effective, to have happier customers? This is the time to tap into team intelligence. The people around you, your leadership team, this is their time to step up and help you lead, to influence an entire organization, to influence your customers, to influence your community. You need team intelligence. You can't do this on your own. The Bible says, and, and I hate to get to preachy on you, but the Bible says a man that uh, isolates himself breaks out against all sound judgment and wisdom. If you are electing in this time, in this season of all seasons to say, I'm going to figure it out by myself, you crazy. <laughs> you, you are crazy and you are breaking out against all sound judgment. If you never knew how to use and leverage your board, this is the season to put them to work and ask their guidance and help to guide you. The Bible says that with a multitude of counselors, we are able to successfully wage war. This is a war against our way of life, a war against our business, a war against services we provide to our customers because they need it. This is a war against our faith, our uh, peace, our inner peace, our capacity to maintain joy. You need a team around you, team, a family. Come on now. You need, a, you need a team around you to help you think through how to lead, how to influence your organization, your customers, your bottom line. There are people looking to you. They're waiting for you to make sound decisions. They're looking to you to, to be the leader that needs to be up front leading. And you can't do it on your own. You need smart teams around you. You also need to get to the point, once you have team intelligence around you, to make smart decisions. Everything that has to be decided from soup to nuts, be smart about it. Take the emotion out of it. Take the frustration out of it. Take the politics out of it. Who cares? Be smart. Be wise. Be intelligent. Your team, they are looking at you to be the very thing you claim to be, a leader. And if you're going to influence people, it's not going to be because of your emotionalism. It's going to be because you've tapped into your team and they've given you wise counsel based upon the best information they have right now, based upon their ability to understand what the uh, experts and officials are saying about this virus. And you got to make smart decisions, smart proposals that take into account all this stuff. What the officials are saying, what the experts are saying, what your team is saying, and get this, what your heart is saying. Running a business is about the bottom line. Running a nonprofit is about the bottom line. But in our industry, we also lead with our heart. 
And this leads me to my last point about leadership. You got to have team intelligence. You got to be uh, make some smart decisions. You got to be led by a strong moral compass. The reason why we get in this business primarily is because our hearts drew us to fix a problem or to serve a need in our community. Man, I feel like I'm preaching to y'all. I almost want to ask for an amen right now. We've launched our nonprofits to help young people, to help older people, to help puppies, to help the whales, to help veterans, to help returning citizens, to help all types of groups in our community because our hearts drew us in it. We have a moral responsibility to lead. Where is your moral compass? Where is your faith in something greater than yourself? It's pretty selfish to think that you are inherently that you inherently consume and and maintain and possess all information. That is selfish. That is not wise. That is not true. You got to be led by something much greater than yourself. Purpose bigger than you. Team intelligence. Got to make smart decisions. You got to have a strong moral compass. From this, you can expect to make some good, wise business decisions as it relates to this current crisis. You can look at what your your peers are doing, your competitors are doing in this industry and in other industries and make some wise decisions that will benefit and help your business and your customers. You can do it. You're also going to have to use smart smart teams, make smart decisions in your moral compass to be flexible. Because we are living through something we've never lived through before, we are going to have to make adjustments based upon the latest and greatest information. And this is not the time to be the stubborn old leader that refuses to change because you hate change. Sir, ma'am, uh... It is two. Is it 2020? March 2020. Uh, the season for not wanting to change has gone out the window a long time ago. Just so you know, but certainly as it relates to this pandemic that has gone crazy, stubborn leaders will not survive this crisis. Neither were their organizations. If you ever needed an excuse to change. If you ever needed an excuse to step up and to lead and to to do something different, if you ever needed an excuse to speak up and to provide wisdom, to provide intellect, this is the moment because people are looking to you to lead them out of this crisis and only the good Lord knows how long it will last. There are a couple of benefits to this guidance, this these ideas I'm sharing with you uh, to tap into and team intelligence, make smart decisions and and uh, be led by a moral compass. There are three benefits to this. Uh, number one, the, 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 the first benefit is you will inevitably rebuild a brand new culture. If you have been dying to erase bad behavior, bad habits, this is the time where you can establish leadership principles and expectations that will reset the way people look at you. If you failed as a leader over the past year, two, three, five, ten years, this is a moment to reset that and to make good decisions, to lead your team, to lean on your team, and to be led by a strong set of morals to rebuild and reset the culture, to rebuild and reset the way people look at you. Because leadership doesn't have an expiration date. Leadership is not just relegated to a crisis moment. It's not relegated to a moment where people are in dire need, nor is it relegated to the good times. Leadership is needed 24-7, 365 days a year for the entire life cycle of an organization from its birth until its death. Take this opportunity to be a leader and rebuild the culture of your organization the way it ought to be built. Here's the second benefit to leading in a crisis. You have an opportunity to not only reset the culture, but to reset the organization so that it become it can become sustainable. Perhaps some of you have been managing the company recklessly financially. Perhaps you've been managing uh, HR policies recklessly. Perhaps you've been managing operations recklessly and this crisis is forcing you to rethink some things because you have to change. Because you have to adjust. 
Because you have to make adjustments and shifts. This is a time where you will notice the opportunities to shift culture and to shift the organization to become sustainable. Right. All that reckless behavior, all that lazy behavior, all of that, uh, all those decisions that you're making that are pretty selfish and self-indulging as a nonprofit leader. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This is the time to make a shift. Here's the third final benefit I'll share with you. If you decide to lead through a crisis, if you decide to. Engage your team in intelligent conversation, make smart decisions and and be led by a moral compass. The third benefit to all this is you will undoubtedly cultivate a happy customer base. Customers respect leadership. Customers respect organizations that have strong leaders who are forward thinking, who are thoughtful, who are strategic who are considerate, who are empathetic, who understand the needs of the paying customer, who understands how to position a company to not only survive but thrive. Customers respect that. They respect your ability to anticipate how to shift with changes in society. And the organizations with strong leaders that are able to lean on team intelligence, make smart decisions, and be led by World Compass, they not only will lead their organizations through this crisis once it's over, but they will survive and thrive post this crisis. I am praying for all of our nonprofit leaders during this crisis because we need that. Uh, we need to be covered in prayer, flat out. It's not easy. There is no rule book to this. There are um, there are playbooks that exist on how to handle this. And right now, the best I can say is I'm praying for each and every one of you. I'm praying for my own self, praying for my organization as we wrestle with this as well. I'm thankful to uh, be a part of an organization with solid leadership, smart leaders, caring leaders, leaders who are willing to listen and engage the team, make smart decisions and be led by a strong moral compass. I'm spoiled, so I'm thankful. But at large, our industry, we got to move together. I'm sure there are people who are on the for-profit side who are, who are doing the same, talking about the same stuff. But for us in a nonprofit world, we need to lead through this crisis. Our companies are depending upon us. Our staff, they are depending upon us. Our communities, our customers, they're dependent upon us. Our boards, they are dependent upon us. And as history is writing itself in front of our very eyes, once it's said and done, what will history say about your leadership? What will leadership say about the decisions you made? What will leadership say about the way you led your team? What will will history rather say about the decisions you make, what would history say about the way you led your team, what would history say about your moral compass? It's all about leadership. Stay safe out there. Follow the guidelines of the officials and the experts. Don't get fancy. Don't get cute. It's okay. Follow their guidelines. Be smart. My prayer is that you make smart decisions for your programs, for your organizations that will not only get you through this crisis, but get you through until the end so that you can re- re-up and restart operations. And I hope you're praying for me and my organization as well. This is the Dr. William Clark Podcast. We'll catch you in the next episode. Stay safe, everybody.